What's up everybody, P. Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another episode of Ranking the Albums. Today we're going to take a look at the discography of a very cool band. Started, got their start in the 70s, the early 70s. They took many, many years off after the late 70s and then have come back triumphantly in more recent years with a, a couple of really good albums with a revamped lineup. This band kind of doesn't really fit in any one place kind of neatly. Of course, they're classified as a progressive rock band, but you could also say, especially some of the early stuff, is very folk-based. It's very Baroque-sounding. Uh, there's lots of classical influences in their music. At times, there's not a lot of rock, but uh, they're certainly eclectic. The band is called Griffin. We've got seven studio albums. Of course, the band uh, comprised of, at least from the classic era, Brian Gouland on bassoon, bass and tenor crumb horns, recorders, keyboards, and vocals. This was a very unique band. Like I said, very folky band, right? That mixed progressive rock with folk and medieval music, right? So bassoons and crumb horns, all these weird, odd instruments. You had Richard Harvey on recorders. Okay, right? Recorders. Soprano, alto, and tenor, crumb horn, organ, harpsichord, harmonium, glockenspiel, mandolin, classical guitar, and vocals. Richard Harvey was kind of like the multi-instrumentalist in the band. You had Graham Taylor on guitars, both electric and acoustic, harpsichord, organ, recorder, vocals, and David Oberly on drums, percussion, glockenspiel, and vocals. We'd have, we would have other guys come and go from the band, but that's mainly kind of like the classic lineup of the band early on. So like I said, we've got seven albums. I'm going to rank them in the order that I like them. So we've got <clears throat> five of the albums came out in the 70s, and then nothing for like 40 years, and they've released two in more recent years, 2018, 2020, I believe. Uh, nothing since 2020, but I'm sure we'll see something else from the band because they're on a roll again, right? So, uh, again, if you've never checked out this band, uh, kind of hard to describe, right? Because the early stuff, like I said, is very folk-based, very kind of medieval, renaissance festival type of stuff, right? But bits of classical and folk, but very complicated arrangements. As each album went on, they, they started touring with bands like Yes and so forth. You can hear lots of symphonic prog like Yes. Some of the songs and the arrangements will remind you a little bit of Gentle Giant. So if you like that kind of very complex, very quirky, very intelligent type of progressive rock and you like folk music as well, uh, give these guys a try. They're really, really good. Their albums are very, very enjoyable, but they're very British sounding, very, very different but really intricate music, very kind of whimsical at times. Like it a lot. You'll hear me use these words quite a bit. And where else are you going to hear in kind of like a rock bass band, uh, crumb horn and bassoon, right? You're not. It's, it it's makes them so unique. When you hear the crumb horn and the bassoon and the harpsichord and the harmonium, you're like, oh my God, this sounds like from like 1795, right? Uh, the year 1795. Yeah, that's Griffin for you, right? So uh, again, I'm going to start with my number seven. I'm going to work my way, way back. So uh, coming in at number seven, I'm going to go with their fifth album. It came out in 1977. The album is called Treason. All right, so there, there's the band right there. So here, by this point in time, a guy named Bob Foster replaced founding member Graham Taylor on guitars. And by this point in time, almost all the folk elements from the uh, first couple of albums are pretty much gone, save for the bassoon and the recorder, which does pop in from time to time. That's Again, that's kind of like their signature sound, right? <clears throat> Loads of keyboards, lots of intricate electric guitar on this album, again, as opposed to some of the albums being more acoustic guitar based. Uh, again, very much influenced by Yes. They toured with Yes a bunch of times, and then that is, uh, you'll notice in some of their latter albums in the 70s, very much Yes influence. Gentle Giant as well. I'm not sure how much of an influence Gentle Giant was, but definitely Yes. You can hear uh, first track on the album is the longest one, Spring Song. Terrific. Really, really good stuff. A must hear for any Yes fan. The vocals even are a little in the higher pitched range, kind of like John Anderson as well. But lovely, lovely song. Great prog track. Definitely the best song on the album. 
and, and one of their more notable tracks as well. It's a great, great song. Uh, from there, we got Round and Round, which is a little more poppy, but still nice uh, proggy flourishes on the keyboards. Flash in the Pantry, to me, sounds like 10cc. It's like all of a sudden you got this kind of like quirky pop song. Really works well. It's a good song. Uh, Falero Lady, more of a hard rocker. You got the Dreamy and Complex Snakes and Ladders, which is another really good song on the album. You got uh, piano driven pop on the song called Fall the Leaf. That's just got like this very melodic, soaring quality to it. And you got the majestic, uh, somewhat jazzy closer, Major Disaster. Uh, I think it's a nice album. It's not one of their best, but there's some definitely good material on here and some real highlights on here. I will say right now, there is no bad song in this ca- or bad album in this catalog. It depends on whether you like the folky stuff more or the more electronic, electric prog stuff, right? Because you've got some of these albums kind of like are more of one than the other. But this one, definitely one of their more prog and rock efforts. I like it, though. I think it's really good. This usually gets kind of lumped down at the bottom for most lists, and I would agree, but not that it's bad. I think there's no bad album here at all. Again, I really do enjoy that quite a bit. In fact, I toyed with that one uh, coming in at number seven over what I picked for number six, which originally was my number seven. That's the self-titled release Griffin. Okay, that's their first album right there with that great cover. All right, this is a two-on-one here. Debut album... It's pretty much mostly all acoustic, folk, medieval. I dare I even say prog rock because I don't think prog or rock was even on their spectrum at this point. It's basically an acu- it's a folk album, but it's got these medieval textures, these classical textures, like English, very, very British sounding album, right? But highly complex arrangements. You've got bassoon, crumhorn, recorder, acoustic guitar, glockenspiel, mandolin, harpsichord, harmonium, other keyboards, drums, percussion, and it's not like the drums is not like a guy sitting in a drum kit. It's mostly guy, a guy hitting like some little small drums and things like that, but really intricate stuff going on. It's very, very cool. 12 songs, a lot of tracks on here. Um, most are fairly short, really quirky. Vocals appear on some of them. The vocals are very British sounding, right? Very old sounding. Um, but I tell you, this is the most intricately complex folk music you're ever going to hear. I love Sir Gavin Grimbold. That's a really fun track. I love the use of the bassoon and the crumb horn on Three Jolly Butchers. So well done. You get the really haunting track, The Unquiet Grave, which is the longest track on the album at just over six minutes, or uh, just, a, just under six minutes, I should say. Everything else is fairly short, two, three minutes long. Uh, I love the intricate drums and the recorder on Estampi, another really, really fun song. Um, Overall, that's kind of my take on this album. It's a really fun album. This is not something I normally would listen to, I will say that. Um, But it's so well crafted and the songs and the arrangements are so complex, yet it's really easy to listen to. It's very lighthearted. It's not rock. It's probably not even prog. But this is some of the wildest medieval-flavored folk music you will ever hear. And I have to give it a lot of credit for that. Like I said, this was originally going to be my number seven, but it's so well done. I probably listened to Trees and more, but this is just an exceptionally crafted album, and I have to give lots of credit to that. So that's coming in at number six. Number five, we're going to go to... The fourth album from 1975, Raindance. That's this one right here. Okay. Much more rock-based, less folky, medieval sounding than the efforts that came before it. So you'll see a pattern here as we go through these albums. Uh, The band sounding, like I said, closer and closer to something like Yes or Gentle Giant. Lots of Moog synthesizer, other keyboards, organ electric piano but still you got the bassoon and the crumb horn all over the place but not not as much as on the first couple albums down the dog really good vibrant opener lots of moog flourishes and even some funky clavinet which i think sounds really great here uh rain dance the title track kind of has a camel feel to it mostly synth driven nice track there mother nature's son more of a mellow pop song you got the quirky fontanelle fontanental version which has the crumb horn going up and the bassoon going up against blazing electric guitar and Moog synthesizer. Very cool. Vocals are very British, very folky, kind of whimsical. Might not be for everybody's taste. Got Wallbanger. That's more of a fiery rock based piece. But for me, the standout track here is the 15 plus minute closer. 
Ein Klein Heldenleben. Whatever that means, I have no idea, but it's like I said, it's 15 minutes plus. Could have come off of their third album. It's total prog. Any Yes fan will love this song. Acrobatic guitars and keyboards flying all over the mix. It's complex as hell. Big, thick bass lines. Could it be Rickenbacker, possibly. Intricate drumming, and it's real majestic sounding. Excellent, excellent song. One of the best songs in their catalog. All right, It's on an album that's a little on the spotty side, but the good stuff is really great. And, you know, just for that one song alone, I had to kind of rank this a little bit higher. So really, really good album. Again, they have better, but it's still quite solid. So that's uh, Rain Dance number five for me. Going to number four. I am going to go to the most recent album, which I do not have a physical copy of. It's called Get Out of My Father's Car from 2020. So this is their seventh album overall, most recent album. Uh, and this band follows up uh, the album before that, Reinvention, which came out uh, in 2018. So you've got two quick albums in a row from them after their reformation. Uh, here you've got three original classic members are still in the band. you got Graham Taylor, Brian Gouland, and Dave Oberly. Back alongside Reed Player, who also was on Reinvention, Andy Finton. He plays uh, sax, recorders, flutes, and all those sort of things. Um, plus two new members, Claire Taylor on violin and keyboards, and Rob Levy on bass. Uh, and kind of like the Reinvention album, which we'll talk about shortly, here you have a blend of classical, folk, baroque, prog, rock, and even little bits of jazz and boogie. Right? Normal Wisdom from the Swamp got some really wild titles on some of these on the later albums. Normal Wisdom from the Swamp is an upbeat song with lots of Jethro Tull elements, including pretty heavy electric guitar and uh, and flute. Okay, so I instantly think of Tull there. Crumb Dancing also kind of has a Tull feel to it. Again, it's, it's folky, but yet it's got hard rock elements as well. Again, more flute, more crunchy electric guitar. Makes sense. Um, Fourth Sahara has some dreamy violin. I really like the addition of violin in the music, which they didn't have early on in the 70s. So it's almost like they're replacing some of those other instruments that they used so heavily in the 70s. Now you got violin playing a prominent role. You got violin, flute, bassoon on this one. Really cool. You got the quirky and quite whimsical suite for 68. And then you got the uh, high energy prog of Percy the Defective Perspective Detective. Another great. Great song, great title, and then the uh, the wild romp that is the title track, which to me sounds like the Dixie Dregs meets Gentle Giant with a little touch of jazz, a little touch of boogie, and then you got bassoon and violin all over the place. Really, really great album. The fact that these guys are making uh, an album like this so late in the game, give them all sorts of kudos for that. So that's my number four. Number three, I'm going to go with Reinvention from 2018. So this is their sixth album, their comeback album after being away for 40 years. We got Graham Taylor, Brian Gulan, Dave Oberly reforming the band along with three new members. Like I mentioned, Andy Finton was one of them. He's still in the band today. Uh, band kind of going back to their folky roots on stuff like Pipe Up, Downsland, Derry, Del Danko, which again, just... Just sounds like classic Griffin. Got the acoustic guitars, the bassoon, the crumb horn, the recorder, majestic keyboards, fantastic track. Rhubarb crumb horn, lovely. You got the whimsical, a futuristic antiquarian, which again introduces violin to the ensemble here, and it fits really, really well. Uh, you got the 11-minute Haddock's Eyes, has some catchy vocals to go along with a, a mix of prog and folk arrangements. Um, Nice to hear the electric guitar used on the heavier section on this one to kind of combat the violin and the bassoon. Really nicely done. Bathsheba, Sailor V, a couple more highlights later on in the CD. Really, really good. A lovely album. Soaring melodies for the vocal tracks, even the, the music themselves. Just very, very melodic. Expert instrumentation. And it, it just gives you the, the feel that you got from those early Griffin albums. Once again, 40 plus years later. So excellent stuff there. That is my number three. Number two, I'm going to go with uh, where is it? Oh, I didn't show you Reinvention. There it is right there. <laughs> Sorry. I also have the uh, CD for that one. So that's Reinvention. Number two is going to be Midnight Mushrooms. Kind of a strange name, right? Midnight Mushrooms? What does that mean, Pete? Uh, couldn't tell you. Um, but yeah. This is their second album from 1974. Have anything other pictures to show you? No, not really. From 1974, 
So this kind of takes what they were doing on their first album, but adds the prog into it, right? So here's where it all kind of st starts to fall into place for all the prog rock fans out there. So six tracks, you get the opening 18 minute title track is a thing of epic beauty. More electronic keyboards are being used by this point in time, as well as electric guitars. So this combats and joins with the bassoon, the crumb horn, the acoustic guitar, the harpsichord, the mandolin, and all the other acoustic instruments. It's all starting to sound a little bit more like what a lot of other bands were doing right around the same time. You know, overall, the music is probably a, a less like whimsical and less overtly folky. Uh, and again, no doubt touring with bands like Yes is going to move them towards straight ahead prog rock but there's still plenty of folk on this album um like i said title track epic proportions great great song another one of the highlights of their catalog uh you got great use of church organ on the plowboy's dream along with the first appearance of vocals on the album uh you get all the woodwind instruments come out to play on the upbeat the last flash of gabardine taylor uh, you got organ recorder and acoustic guitars on gulan rock you got the majestic double dutch the dramatic closer, Athelion, which also has plenty of keyboards to kind of play alongside the dizzying recorder and acoustic electric guitars, which are just fluttering all over the place. Very cool track uh, and really good, like, leathery, booming electric bass lines. I really like the blending of medieval folk with progressive rock on this album. And, you know, that kind of mix has never really sounded as enchanting as it does with this band Griffin. So this one was a contender for number one. But it's hard to pick anything but my number one when you've released an album like 1974's Red Queen, Red Queen to Griffin 3. Their third album. This follows Midnight Mushrooms. And the move to full-on prog rock is here. Um, and by most people, this is widely accepted as their magnum opus. Just four long tracks, no vocals, all instrumental. Richard Harvey here is implementing a wide array of keyboards alongside playing crumb horn and recorders. Graham Taylor using more electric guitar than ever before. And the electric bass from Philip Nestor, very, very prominent on this album. Plus, you got uh, David O'Barely playing more rock-style drumming, right? So it's definitely more rock arrangements. Think Yes meets Gentle, uh, Gentle Giant meets Jethro Tull. That's what I get when I listen to this. Nice classical elements as well on the album. Uh, opening move is terrific. Second spasm blends elements of midnight mushrooms with frantic progressive rock. You got wild moog runs, intricate rhythms. You got lament, which is more of a folky piece with acoustic guitar, crumb horn, bassoon, recorder, various keyboards. And then you got the closer checkmate. That's exactly what this whole, it's kind of like a concept album, Red Queen to Griffin 3. So it's like uh, two guys playing, playing chess, right? Um, checkmate. Very medieval flavored prog rock. Great, great song. Uh, I love the quirky nature of this. Very, very complex, but it's kind of, it's it's quirky, it's whimsical, and that's what this whole band is all about. Uh, you get wildly intricate stuff all over this entire album, and I think if you're a fan of uh, complex instrumental prog with a healthy dose of folk and classical elements, Red Queen to Griffin Three is the album you should probably listen to first. But again, I, you can't really go wrong with any of these albums. Again, if you want the more 70s prog stuff, definitely go Red Queen to Griffin 3 and uh, Rain Dance and Treason. If you like the folky stuff, definitely check out the first album. And, you know, the, the mix of the two equally is probably Midnight Mushrooms. But then again, the two most recent albums are also just great examples of all these different styles coming together in this you know, music that sounds so British, but so like Baroque and medieval sounding and so folky. It's so, it's bombastic in its own way. Very, very cool stuff. This is a really, really interesting band. It's funny because before I did this ranking, I hadn't really listened to Griffin much other than the two most recent albums. You know, I hadn't really gotten to the back part of the catalog in quite a while. And it was really enjoyable going through some of these albums that I haven't heard in a number of years. And just, you forget how great this band was, how unique they were. So uh, I think if you have never listened to Griffin before, and you kind of like folk music, you like prog rock, uh, you like the little bits of classical as well in your music, I think you're gonna really enjoy these guys. If you have heard them before, please rank them as you would, as you like them down in the comments below. And uh, tune in next week for another Ranking the Album show. Till then, this is on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook, we're on YouTube, all together. 
all the damn time. Please subscribe if you haven't already and click on that notification bell so you get alerted of all of our content as it posts. And please do hit the like button before you leave. Also, we got the links below to our Ko-Fi Patreon channel donations as well as our merch page. So thanks in advance for all that. In addition to other stuff from Griffin, you've got uh, some great uh, BBC recordings. Okay, this one's called About As Curious As It Can Be. This is from uh, 1974 and 75. So you got some of the tracks from those albums done uh, for the BBC. And then you've got uh, Glastonbury Carol, which also has some uh, BBC recordings as well from 1972. Uh, Glastonbury uh, Carol single and some other odds and ends, right? So you got some other fun stuff available from Griffin you can go check out. And uh, anyway, yeah, that's the ranking. So uh, thanks for watching, everybody. It's all about Griffin today. So go out and check these albums out. And we'll see you next week with another episode of Ranking the Albums. Till then, I am P. Pardo. Have a good rest of your Sunday. Stay tuned for the Curse of the Collector coming up tonight. Take care. Bye-bye.